When you have regular practices, setting that foundation is also one of the things that will let you have such a um, repertoire of tools to pull from when you're in the moment in need. Yes. A tool. Definitely. That's why breath came so easy for me last week. Right. Because you always have it. I always have it. I use it so much. I teach it so much. So it was my first little like go-to tool when I knew I had five minutes and I got it. I had to get my brain in a better space. And again, you can use it anywhere. No joke. If any of you are ever seated next to me on a plane and we hit turbulence, you're going to see me go (laughs) in for five and out. (laughs) Welcome to the In Vibe Live podcast with Amy Parker and Cheryl Dunn. By tuning in, you are joining a community that will inspire you to increase balance, wellness, and joy in your life. We'll offer expert information and insightful conversations to help us all on our journey to live more in vibe. For more information and articles, remember to also check out our website at invibelife.com. That's E-N-V-I-B-E-L-I-F-E.com. And we're grateful that you're here. Welcome to the In Vibe Life podcast with Amy Parker and Cheryl Dunn. And today we wanted to talk about tools for dealing with stress in our lives because we feel like that is something that's coming up for us lately, you know, with people getting back to more work and the kids' schedules starting to pick up. Therefore, maybe some of our old habits or old stressors are creeping back into our lives that we had before COVID that. I know I swore off. And you, Amy, do you, are you feeling that? Yeah, I think so, too. And I think, you know, we're just stretched so thin emotionally right now that maybe little things are triggering us more. But, I mean, just to share with everyone, the topic for this conversation came up. And I'm going to wrap you up, Cheryl. Go for it. Because <laughs> last week you had some really bad days. And you called me one morning saying, I had to go back and reread some of the articles we've written for In Vibe Life or listen to the Completely. podcast to pull those tools out. And we realized that we hadn't had just one place yet where we said, let's just talk about some of the different strategies and tools you can use on those days. Yeah. And some of them, you know, there are some tools that I think of more as maintenance, or if you kind of do these things on a regular basis, you will set yourself up better for when you have those days. And then there are some rescue 911 tools out there too that are really great to pull on when you are in that moment where I don't know what to do to get out of this moment. And that's what I was looking for last week. Exactly. When I went to one of the articles that Amy had written about why do we have these moments in our lives? Why do we hit rock bottom? Conflict and struggle. Yes. So Mm -hmm. I was reading that article and I got to the end and I was like, I need the tools right now. And, And I know that I, I mean, Amy and I talk about them all the time, but it was, I just, Life had gotten crazy stressful and I was overwhelmed and didn't, you know, I I think I was in such a state of overwhelm, I didn't have it at my fingertips. So, but that's kind of part of what we're here about too. And I want to say that because just because we're really nerds about studying this (laughs) stuff and so into it and so into it, we want to talk about it with others and share it. It doesn't mean that we're immune to having those days or those situations coming up where we feel overwhelmed or totally. like we don't know what to do. And that I think as we talked it out over a couple of days, Cheryl, it made us say even more. That's why these conversations are so important. And we want to invite more people mm-hmm. into them and open them up because we can all really support each other and learn from each other. Completely, completely. And after I came off of that few days of just feeling overwhelmed, mm-hmm. it's really, it was an overwhelmed feeling. I had, a, I mean, really just an hour to kind of sit and take a breath. And I wrote an article at that point uh-huh. that will be coming out in a week or so about mindful movement or meditative movement, whatever you want. I, it's a movement practice that I refer to a lot in our podcast and our articles and it's a cute, it's a quick, short and sweet little article on what I really mean by that. And mm-hmm. so, which I think is important because I think a lot of people hear about mindful movement. It's kind of a catchphrase right now. People might not really kind of get 
what that means. Right. So the article kind of explains that, but it really took me slowing down to be in the right space for anyway, the idea to come to me because mm -hmm. the idea to sit down and write about it hadn't come to me over this last year and a half, two years that we've been really diving down, trying to write articles and have podcasts and talk about our tools. So I was able to write this quick little article after I took a breather. But I think today's podcast is more about the 911 stuff that, you know, like the emergency stuff. Like last week when um, I was last week when I was having some pretty stressful times, I would, and literally from my business to my house, the commute is less than five minutes, which might explain why I'm always late coming out to Amy's house because it's a little <laughs> bit more than five minutes to get to Amy's house for me. I'm not quite used to that, but <laughs> um, so I am spoiled with that. So it's a five minute commute, but I only had those five minutes alone because I knew when I get home, my kids would be there pulling at my strings to do something mm -hmm. for them. So I quickly jumped to some breath work that we've talked about. So breath is one of those quick go-to tools that I think you can use without other people know you're using it. And I think that's something too. I need to sometimes find these tools because I'm at an office running a practice and sometimes I'm stressed out about something that has absolutely nothing to do with the office. And so why bring my junk there? Well, and I know, let's dive into breath a little bit because you and I both think it's so important and kind of for different reasons. Like um, I've shared with our community out here before that I came to you and I kind of came to this um, belief in the importance of full mind, body, spirit balance following some health issues having to do with my lungs. So truly breath became learning to breathe well and intentionally intentional breathing became a life-saving tool for me i believe and definitely a path to wellness for me um just kind of you know it's made me get into breath a little bit more it's not something i thought of until it became something, something that, that hard for was you. precious for me or um i took it for granted mm -hmm. before that i think and you know it goes back in every spiritual tradition, you know, in Hindi texts, breath as the life force goes back I mean, thousands and thousands of years. Think about, you know, in Genesis, when God created Adam, he breathed life yes, into yeah. him. And, mm -hmm. you know, that symbolism is used throughout many um, religious traditions, mm -hmm. even today, breathing the Holy Spirit or breathing life. And so there's a great spiritual significance yes. of the breath, but you deal with it on a really physical yes. basis on I, a daily. Definitely. And so, you know, I don't talk a whole lot about the spiritual stuff at the office because we're dealing with people's muscle skeletal dysfunction, right? Mm -hmm. And I do believe that some of that muscle, muscle skeletal dysfunction can come from, um, breath patterns mm -hmm. or energy blockages in the body. And with that, I know, or say you're in pain and you get a shortness of breath. I mean, that's just a common factor. You know, if you hurt, your breath changes, you know, something drastic, break a bone, the breath will quickly speed up, right? Almost get in a car wreck, mm -hmm. your breath's going to speed up. That's what sympathetic nervous system yes. kicks in. It yeah. kicks in like that. So my goal, if somebody comes into me with that breath that maybe got stuck there because they were in pain too long mm -hmm. or that nervous energy was there too long. So they always breathe high up into their chest and have a, a more rapid breath. Then I need to slow that breath down and get them deeper down into the bottom of the lungs, into the diaphragm with their breath so that their nervous system will calm down a little bit which will then increase the energy flow throughout the body and gets less locked down. So I often, and you guys have probably heard me say this before, I often explain to my clients that breath to their movement is what music is to dance. And so when we are doing our exercises in the studio, there's a pattern with your breath flow and it moves you so that your inhale and exhale 
creates rhythm in the body and that you move through that, then that's how I think maybe in a class setting, you could turn it into meditative movement. If you create this intention of focusing on your breath and that your breath really moves you and maybe you control your breath so that it matches the rhythm that you want the body to move like. And this is when you've been in a yoga class and you hear them talk about prana. It, yes. It's about yes. intentional breathing or mm -hmm. um, using the breath to get to greater um, physical and emotional balance mm -hmm. and harmony. More flow. Mm -hmm. more, flow. More, more flow. So what technique do you like to um, have people use when they're in movement with you and then what do you recommend as we said we were going to talk about those rescue 911 moments yeah so um when they're in movement with me it really has to match what i'm asking their body to do mm -hmm. right which if again I'm, goes back to that mindful movement yes, concept exactly uh, pull everything together in that moment yes so whatever i'm trying to get out of their body i try and match that so an example would be so say I want someone to find extension or an arch, you know, to lift their heart up. It's easier for someone to take an inhale in that place. And if I'm asking for flexion, maybe like an ab curl or something like that, it's easier to take an exhale in that place. And now that's not saying I won't ever switch that up based mm -hmm. on what I'm asking out of the body. But, you know, there's certain... It's about creating flow. It's about mm -hmm. creating flow okay. and rhythm with the breath. Connection. So, yes. Yes, that you feel the two work together. And then I can create this like harmony and peace with their nervous system, which will sometimes turn off a muscle maybe that's holding really tight and creating stress and pain in their body. So if they can, through movement and breath, create harmony and flow, it will decrease pain and discomfort in the body. Okay, so a tool I like to use, and this is just self-developed for myself, and I've talked about um, heart math and the Heart Math Institute and Heart Brain Coherence before, um, and we'll link that again in the show notes here. Go there. I mean, I think it's so valuable. That was another life-changing lesson for me. But think about where you're sending your breath. Mm -hmm. Number one, and in movement, when I'm doing movement, by the way, I'm digressing here um, for myself or when I have taught Pilates classes, I tell people if you're hurting in an area or tight in an area, think of sending your breath to that area when you take a deep breath. It's amazing how that works. And so I do think that's important because you're helping control your energy flow or your life flow, your life force. Um, but when I am trying to get into a state of coherence, which is again, when you're in those moments of anxiety or stress or whatever, your sympathetic nervous system kicks in. You want to bring in your parasympathetic nervous system, the one that calms everything down. So your heart rate and your breathing patterns have become irregular. You want to get those back in a coherent flowing state. To me, the easiest thing is breathe in to a count of five and out to a count of five. That became my 911 tool. Okay. <laughs> Last week when I had my little five minute commute, I was, I was like, okay, just inhale two, three, four, five, exhale two, three, four, five. And then I started realizing that I, my, I wasn't saying it that calm in my head, but I was like, <sighs> Uh -huh. You know, right. and then I went back to, I think something we'd referred to in a couple of podcasts ago that what I learned from a counselor with my kids is she called it square breathing and she drew a little square with her fingers and she would say, inhale, two, three, four, five, hold your breath, three, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, hold your breath. And that that's a slow. great visual. Yeah, so I don't think you've talked about that I didn't. before. No, it's a, maybe those, it was in my brain. I yeah, for those of you who can't see, you know, you go just, up the side of the square for uh -huh. five, across to hold it, down the side of the square for five, and then across. Um, yeah. And so pause. she used that with the kids with their mm -hmm. hands and she could do that sometimes and not even use her words right. and they would start, these were elementary kids, the whole assembly would start breathing in this rhythmic slow pattern and it just created this, I, I just thought it was amazing. Well, because you got the whole group of people to be in a state of coherence together. together. So then the other thing I'd say in that whole notion of directing your breath that we talked about, we use for physical movement. In this case, think of sending your breath to your heart. 
when you think of sending your breath to your heart, you are helping your heart more quickly get into a state of coherence is what's been shown with all the heart math studies. And again, just my personal anecdotal experience, yeah. I have found that to be helpful. Here's a bigger thing. And we said today we're going to cover the kind of rescue 911 topics more yeah. than others, but this is the benefit of starting to implement some practices on a regular basis in your life. It's like for me, for you who use breath as a tool when we are doing movement, when I'm meditating, um, at times like that, it means that then when I'm in that stressful situation at the grocery store or my flight's been delayed or whatever it is, and I kick into that breathing pattern, that coherent breathing pattern, it's almost like it transfers me back to that moment. It, it sends my body to the same place my body is in, in at least a small way, and when I'm you know, sitting in my happy place, one of these chairs, for example, meditating, or um, doing Pilates or yoga or something like that, and it just relaxes my whole being. Yeah. Then. And so when you have regular practices, Setting that foundation is also one of the things that will let you have such a um, repertoire of uh, tools to pull from when you're in the moment and need yes, a tool. Definitely. That's why breath came so easy for me last week. Right. Because you always have it. I always have it. Yeah. I use it so much. I teach it so much. So it was my first little like go-to tool. When I knew I had five minutes and I got it, I had to get my brain in a better space. And again, you can use it anywhere. No joke. If any of you are ever seated next to me on a plane and we hit turbulence, you're going to see me going <laughs> for five and out for five, for five and out for five. <laughs> definitely. Right. Yeah. Definitely. Like definitely. Okay. So we have covered breath. So we covered breath. <laughs> we covered mindful movement. Although just a little bit of that. I want you to go into that a little bit more. I know you say you've covered it, but I do think... Um, sometimes when we think of, um, mindfulness tools or healing tools, everyone just only thinks of the woo woo yes. or the spiritual or the meditative. It can be a jog though. So here's the thing. Oh, um, yeah. So this is, I wrote that article yesterday. Uh -huh. I went on a jog with my friend this morning and I, I warned her, I said, when you read this next article, it's taught, I don't use your name, but I'm talking about you. And she goes, and I said, it's all about meditative movement. And she goes, oh, I've, been, I've heard you talk about that. And I think, oh, well, I'm kind of screwing that up for her, <laughs> you know? And I'm like, no, you're not screwing it up. But because in the article, I talk about how there's really three components to mindful movement. And the first one is that I just set a focus. The second one, uh, I set an intention is the first one. Second, I focus on it. And third, I'm grateful for it. So for example, this morning I went for a run with my dear friend and I set an intention. I've been feeling a little imbalanced in my body. So I set the intention that my left leg would work equally as my right leg and I would stay very centered in my core and run symmetrically. So her and I chit chat the whole run. It's our therapy. And we love that, you know, it's our safe space. So I am chit chatting, but at the same time, I come back to, am I running equally? Like I'll look at the white line on the street and I sometimes will look down and see where my feet, feet are hitting that white line to check in, to make sure that I'm staying symmetrical, that I'm not running one leg over the other. Um, so there's my focus. And then when I get back and I'm done with that run, I am tell my body that I'm grateful that it could do what I asked it to do. I'm grateful that I have a friend to go run with because I really enjoy it. You know, just the, I'm grateful that I have a dog that forces me to do this because he has too much energy and he has to get it out. You know, I was grateful so, for the weather. There are two bigger things to come out of that. One is, you know, the mindful movement is something that would be a daily regular practice, yes. right? Yes. But the 911 of it, you had two things there. One is, you know, just go out and move your body. Yeah. I mean, sometimes if you're super stressed out or having a bad day, I really think that moving your body. Can, Even if can, it's a five minute walk around the block. Exactly. Because you're um, moving your energy you got around and it really yeah. helps. But second, like two times now, we've referenced the fact that you went to a friend. 
So I think that's another rescue tool. So you're saying that as part of your regular practice, your I run with friends with your yeah, yeah with your friend, but you know like last week we said when we you were having the bad day, you and I were I was calling you for something just to talk for a minute. And you immediately said, "Can you FaceTime?" and it turned into yeah. a longer. Oh session. my goodness. Mm -hmm. Yes, it came, it turned into, I need to talk to you about what's happening to me. Mm -hmm. you know? So there's another tool right yes. there is it's huge. your loved ones, your family, your, your friends. friends. And you know, of course, you know, so I, I believe more and more as I get older in professionals too. Yeah. Because totally. seeing professionals, I mean, not only do they have some, um, tools, yeah, training, tools. probably yeah. a certain level of compassion yes. or, you know, personality to deal with it. Sometimes having the neutral person helps though. Mm -hmm. um, yes, they're not too deep in it. They're not too invested yeah. in it. It's just an observer um, to give you some good feedback yes. who, you know, they may have love for you, but it's not like your spouse or your one of your best friends or something like that who are hurting when you hurt and yes. feeling the pain when you I, I totally um, feel agree. the pain. So I really, you know, consider those professionals out there who there are many, many good ones. And their perspective too, when they're not in it, is pretty clear. Mm -hmm. And you might not agree with them right off the bat, but then you'll come around and be like, oh, they were mm -hmm. probably seeing it more clear than I was, right? Okay. You know, and it just gives yeah. you those tools. So I, I completely agree. I think there are some great professionals out there that we should lean on. Yeah. You know, and establish that. Or I think it's nice to establish that relationship when you're not in a desperate need of them so that when yeah. you are desperate, set that foundation. You, like yeah. About, you just pick up the, it's easier to pick up the phone if you're not in desperate need, I think. You know, if, if you have a relationship with someone, whether it's a friend mm -hmm. or a professional, if they know you don't often call and say, oh my goodness, please, 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 I need you so much, they're probably going to listen when you do. You yes. Know, you have that relationship. Okay. So we have talked about movement mm -hmm. a few different times now. Yes. We've talked about the breath. Yep. Um, I've got to throw in meditation. I, yes. I know I beat meditation like a dead horse. It has been such a life changing practice for me. And, you know, lifelong prayer, mm -hmm. one who prays prayer, yeah. not yes. prayers, yeah. oh, yeah. Southern draw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> um, but when I really, several years ago, um, implemented a real practice of meditation most, most mornings, it made a big difference for me in my life. And this is going to be another one of those things. And I say, if you can set a foundation, then when you get in that bad moment, you'll have that to draw from. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, my normal practice is I set a timer for 20 minutes first thing in the morning while the house is quiet. Mm -hmm. Don't make it every single day. I do more often than not. Mm -hmm. I don't always make 20 minutes. I do more often than not, you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, be flexible with yourself. But I have a question. Where okay. do you do it? Usually you right where it? you're sitting. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm thinking first thing in the morning, I lay in my bed for a little while before mm -hmm. I get up. And I thought, you know, do you get up and leave that space? It can, so that it you... can be. I mean, some people call that meditation. I really do find a greater sense of connection when I, can totally I mean, because, find but, the sacred okay, space. The sacred space. That's what I was about to get into. So here's another trick or tool, tool that Cheryl and I both like, and it's creating a sacred space. And I, in fact, have one article about this on Invibe Life we can link. And I just, I didn't call it creating a sacred space, but I talked about creating a really um, beautiful and wonderful work environment for yourself or home office for yourself. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting in my personal home office right now, which is also the Invibe Life corporate office. Yes. And, this and her sacred space. And my sacred <laughs> space. This is kind of my everything room. The multi-purpose room. room. <laughs> but that also means I have to tend to it. Well, I have to, for the most part, um, watch the clutter in it. And although it does build up, I, on a regular basis, try to organize and tend to the clutter in here. Which I vow for. She does a great job compared I, to my office. I burn <laughs> candles in here because I like the aroma. I use a diffuser in here with, you know, uplifting like eucalyptus or calming lavender, things mm -hmm. like that sort of fragrances. 
in it. Um, and I just try to make it beautiful and keep it beautiful so that it is my happy place or my sacred space. So first of all, if you have that kind of space, I think, again, your body, your emotional being all drop into that calm, relaxed, um, mm -hmm. es esoterical space mm -hmm. more easily. At least I find that I do. But, you know, I have meditated other places. Sometimes if there's a beautiful sunrise outside, I'll, I'll meditate outside while the sun is coming up because mm -hmm. I'm a big sunrise mm -hmm. person. I love the sunrise. But here's the thing. Meditation can be a rescue 911 also. Because even though I say my happy place is 20 minutes, um, I will meditate for three minutes. Yeah. If I, you know, or five yeah, minutes. I'm a sense. big proponent of a three minute meditation. That's how I started meditating. And even now, um, and three is just kind of my lucky number or favorite number. I think that's why I do the three minute instead of yeah. the two minute or five right. minute or whatever. I like three too. Yeah. yeah. But, <laughs> but if it's in the middle of the day, even if you are in your car and you have to sit in the parking lot before you walk into that meeting that you are dreading having and stressed out about, um, if you can calm your mind and body and again, pull in your breath for that time, maybe that's a good time to set an intention or a mantra. I am well is one of my favorite ones. If I'm stressed, I am well, I am well, I am well. Or, you know, as you breathe in, maybe I am well and mm -hmm. then breathe out something else. Um, I really have found that that can shift things mm -hmm. for me enough that even if it doesn't make everything okay, maybe how I handle everything is better than it would have been if I hadn't, for sure. Yes. I, I did that a lot for a while before work every day just to kind of create an intention. It was almost like mm -hmm. a divide between my rush busy mornings mm -hmm. to calming my space so that when I went into work with clients, it came with that intention. And thank you for the reminder. I need yeah. to get back to that. <laughs> and then even, I haven't really explored these much, but I know there are some cell phone apps now too that can even yes. be a short amount of time. Yes. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Put those on if you need a little help being guided through or having some yeah. ambient music or something like that. For oh, me, that's another thing I use. I oh, use, music. um, yeah, I have a playlist I like on, or an album I like on Spotify, and it's Tibetan Bowls, and that's what I use for meditating, mm -hmm. and have for years now. And so, again, between Palo Santo and being in my calm, quiet space, pre-dawn, if possible, um, with that music playing, it really makes a difference for me. It's interesting that you say music. I know my husband often mentions that he believes going to see live music is a therapy is yeah. it, it is food for his soul that yeah. he needs that every so often and he does it yeah. and if he can be outside listening to live music he'll go do it by himself he doesn't need other people with him he just that's his thing and last week i caught him cleaning the garage he said that was therapeutic too i prefer him to clean the garage versus go see music but you know but that, that back to the physical space. So we were talking about the yes. sacred space, but I want to throw this in as another wellness tool. And that's, um, and we have linked on our site, you know, Marie Kondo, the life. Yes. Changing magic. Decluttering your space. Uh, and you recently put me on a Netflix yes. series, the home edit. I've totally <laughs> been watching the last few days. I really, really do believe that energy flows better in a space when there's not too much clutter. Yes. Completely. Or when your things are organized. And I um, was made to go through a decluttering process a few years ago when I had some circumstances changing in my life where we needed to downsize and in doing so realized, you know, we are just storing a lot of stuff because we have too much space in a way. Yeah. And when we went through that process of decluttering, I think it did free up a lot of, um, creativity, stressful yeah. energy to allow for, yeah, mm -hmm. that, I mean, in fact, in this space now that's more clean decluttered is where mm -hmm. thy different vibe life was born yeah that's what i mean it has been a much more creative mm -hmm. existence for me now since i've done that so don't devalue that or like you said when your husband steven was stressed he went and cleaned the garage, cleaned the garage. and so like that can be like I said, I mean, a wellness tool doesn't have to just be sitting 
no. you know, with mantras Not and meditation. It can mm -hmm. be jogging. It can be cleaning your garage. There can be a lot of different techniques mm -hmm. that can really, you're just looking for something to help shift your attitude a little shift bit. You know, I was telling you this the other day. Um, one of my first, I'd say, wellness teachers or spiritual teachers was, I was very into Marianne Williamson and her books and teachings on A Course of Miracles when I was young. And I think one of the most profound things I read first from her, and this is a teaching in A Course of Miracles, that's where I learned it, is that the definition of a miracle is a shift in perception. So just looking at things differently can be miraculous mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. your life. And um, I know I found that for myself where if I just shifted my, you know, what I know we talk about energy a lot, Cheryl, that, you know, that there are different, your body is energy and you function on different energetic frequencies. Um, if you can operate on those higher frequencies, I believe that, um, it can bring situations to you that are more in kind to those energies. Um, my favorite, and I'm going to let you, I think you have a great explanation of this. So for those of you who might think this is new or what's she talking about, you know, the body is energy. We're, we're energetic beings. So much of us is what we can't see, feel, or touch. We focus so much on what we can see, feel, or touch, but there's as much of us that we can't see, feel, or touch. And my favorite person on this, we're throwing out our list of experts here today, not just our favorite tools, but our favorite teachers who've taught mm -hmm. us these tools, is Dr. Joe Dispenza. Highly recommend his writings and his teachings. And he has this great chart where he shows they've measured in workshops the different sort of energetic wavelengths that come with people who are in different emotional states. And, you know, Gratitude, happiness, joy are those higher energetic mm -hmm. states that it can really affect you, even your physical well-being when you're in those states and can help shift you out of negative emotional states. And I think gratitude's an, a good uh -huh. one or an yeah. easy one to get you into a higher energetic state because Hopefully we can all look around for something we're grateful for and we'll put the breath out there as something and yes. you can't think of something else. Yes. But you have a lot of ways you explain yeah. energy to your clients. So some of this, it's easier in a, my client situation where I'm dealing with um, at the studio to start with just the physical, what you can see, smell and touch. That is an your easy, business is the physical. Yeah, it's the physical. Yeah. It's, it's introducing people to that. So I... After, you know, we've talked about breath and we've got them moving, you know, I talk about things being blocked in the body. It's very easy for them to feel where things are blocked because maybe that's tightness or sore or pain, you know. We deal with people who have a lot of chronic pain, so they could have had a bad back for 10 years before they came to me, right? So there's been a long time of energy finding a place for it to get blocked and Stuck. And so what I try and make him feel that that muscle's block and stuck, but they sometimes don't understand why I'm trying to get the breath to, to help unblock the muscles and get the energy flowing. They then start to think I'm a little weird. So I just simply explain to them, think about this. We are conductors of energy. If you just go to science, if a lightning came down and struck us, it, we we are attract we attract the lightning mm -hmm. because we are energy conductors, right? So it's a reality that we are energy. So it flows through our body. Think about like your science experiment in middle school where you saw the lights go down the cord and flow mm -hmm. from one light to the next. That's the flow that is happening in our body and we want to keep that going but when things get stuck and blocked it's not flowing through that spot so through movement through breath through manual work we try and get that flow going now to kind of relate that to what amy's talking about when you are at a higher frequency you can attract things that are a little bit higher think about a battery one side of that battery is a positive and one side of that is a negative. And when you put two batteries together, when they're the same, they poop, they bolt, to, they can, or a magnet, a magnet, mm -hmm. right? The, the same works like the battery, the positive and the negative. One side's gonna attract it together, but if you flip just one of them, they're gonna repel, 
right? Mm -hmm. So you want to bring in good things in your life and energy that is high. So you don't want to repel somebody that's walking around that's happy and joyful and cheerful, you actually want to be around that person. Mm -hmm. So it's easier for you to attract what you're looking for in life. If you start to work on yourself, you know, and work on getting your energy up, it doesn't mean that you're always there. It doesn't mean you're always happy or you're always at this high level. But I think today, while we really want to talk about this podcast, you can feel when you're resonating at a low frequency and it doesn't feel good. Sometimes right. you ha those are tools to be there. So it's not wrong that you're there, but when you are there, it doesn't feel great. So it's nice to have these 911 rescue tools to help elevate your frequency, to get you back to those things that Amy was referring to as far as being in a frequency of gratitude, joy, elated, you know, that sort of stuff. And it's easier to resonate there than it is in, anger, fear, depression, mm -hmm. those kind of things. The reason I think some people would argue with that mm -hmm. is because it's what they're used to. And so I do think we tend to go to what we're used to. And so yeah. sometimes it's easier to go to those negative places because mm -hmm. you've been in them more. Mm -hmm. but that's where um, it's comfort. We also had a podcast at one point about choosing joy or choosing mm -hmm. happiness mm -hmm. and we are oversimplifying it when we say choose happiness because for most of us, it's something that we have to create intentions for yes, and work for. Mm -hmm. um, but it is possible. It is possible to change your emotional state mm -hmm. with your intention. But here's what came to me when you were saying all of that. I want to talk about the power of reflection because a lot of times I want um, to suggest that these, and this goes back to that article I wrote about conflict, actually, that's okay. on the website. The moments that are difficult are there for a reason and they're there to teach us something. So I'd say, I want to go back now. I wish I'd said this at the beginning of the podcast, but I didn't think about it then. The first thing I'd like everyone to do for a moment when you have those really difficult moments is honor them. Totally. I understand that First of all, be kind with yourself, be compassionate with yourself, honor whatever that is. Say, I mean, even though so far, if you can find yourself, thank you, God, for whatever you're trying to teach me right now, because I promise you there's something you're learning Yes, from doing it and something you can offer yourself or someone else. Here's the other thing I want to warn about, and it's that we are not suggesting that you ignore the negative or that bad no. moment. Um, because there probably is something for you to learn out of it. And so, you know, allow yourself to spend the time you need. I mean, if you need to spend time in negative, doubtful states, give yourself permission to do that too. Mm -hmm. But we just know that you're not going to want to spend too much time, too there. much time there. It won't be no. good for you. First of all, you probably won't learn what you need to learn. And second of all, you'll, you'll start to have physical symptoms. You'll start yes. to feel bad or sick. And so... Yes. That's where the tools to get out, or at least give yourself a reprieve from those moments. Yes, yeah, sometimes you need to get out of that state because you, you have things you got to do that day. You right. Know? Or, I mean, you just want to feel better. or want to feel know. better. And so this is another time, again, I'm just, I'm like beating a dead horse on my favorite things, but journaling can come journaling in. is huge. And again, article out there on journaling too that we can link. Um, but it's big because first of all, I feel like sometimes if something is too big for you, like you are just dealing with something that you cannot understand and you're stuck in a loop where you're having trouble putting one foot in front of the other that day mm -hmm. or whatever it is, let the paper hold it for you. Yes. Like give your mind a break, mm -hmm. pull out a sheet of paper, pull out a journal, just mm -hmm. write. I just even in those moments that to one of my uh, staff the other day, I said, you know, maybe sometimes just write it all down. It doesn't have to be the night you write down everything you're thinking. And then if you don't want anyone to see it, go in the yard and burn it. Right. Go in the yard and burn it's it. It's for you. Yeah. You don't have to send everything that you write down. Oh, you're that's right. something yeah. that happens now. So some of us yes. use writing <laughs> to get rid of frustrations, but with 
emails and things. Sometimes yes. you send that. Sometimes right? don't send it. Right just. for yourself. Right for yourself. But I mean, it, you can make a list. You can just spew out. You can write just a few words that are coming to you to get out. And if you do that, first of all, sometimes, actually oftentimes, I will say when I write, it helps me to figure out what I am supposed to learn mm -hmm. or put things in perspective better. Sometimes it also just spew it out there, set it aside. It frees up my mind and my energy a little bit to move on with other things and come back to whatever was bothering me at a time that I'm in a better place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that sometimes at night when my head is spinning with things I need to do or things I've thought of, I want to do uh -huh. like it's a to-do list going off in my head and I'm not able to sleep. If I go write it down, I've released it. And then I, right. I go, I go right back to sleep. I'm like, Oh, it's there. I'm not going to forget it. I've mm -hmm. put it out there. It's going to be there tomorrow when I wake up because I'm not doing it tonight. Right. Mm -hmm. That, and then I'll write it down and then I can lay down and let, let go of any anxiety, stress, worry. Uh, sometimes it's like, Ooh, that was such a great idea. Yeah. So I'll go write it down so that I've released it and then I can sleep. Mm -hmm. That was kind of how the article I just wrote came to me. It came to me at night, right before I was going to bed, I was like, Oh, this is it. And these are the three things. This is all it is. And I just went and wrote down four words, mm -hmm. a quick title, and the three things, and I went to sleep and knew that I could wake up that next morning and fill in the blanks. Because mm -hmm. I had already had the idea, filling in the blanks wasn't the hard part. It was remembering that idea the next next day. <laughs> and here's another part of writing. If you think of journaling as being, you know, this very profound insights of the universe, it doesn't need to be that. It no. can be whatever you write. Again, it can be lists. Mm -hmm. But also if there's someone you're having some complications with, write a letter to them that you never send them. Right. <laughs> But it's but good. That can be very therapeutic, I think, mm -hmm. sometimes. This and then it shows you more clearly what's bothering you about mm -hmm. the situation mm -hmm. and why. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that that is definitely another tool I've used before. Okay, so let's recap. Mindful movement, breath, um, meditation, meditation, journaling, journaling. Um, and we talked about energy flow. Energy flow. Creating a sacred space. We talked about the square breathing. Yeah. Like all, the sacred space. That's and then there are all the little things like give yourself permission to do something. You just have fun. Oh. You know, have fun or calm. Good. So, I mean, that's another. Sometimes maybe, you know, turn on music really loud and dance or mm -hmm. just something mm -hmm. goofy for yourself. Move your energy around. Move your body. Have fun. Do something that makes you smile. Um, I'm a big bubble bath. Yeah. Lover, you yeah. know, give yourself yeah. permission to take that bubble bath or yeah. I have um, a certain instructor on Peloton that I absolutely love. That's mm -hmm. so funny. And he dances while he's teaching his bike class on the Peloton and I'll dance with him. He's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, watching a funny movie. That's yeah. Watching a funny thing. movie. Yeah. yeah. Because Definitely. all of those things are elevating your emotional yes. being and you just start to laugh at things better. Yeah. You know, laughing. any sort of, anything that makes you laugh. My children love pug videos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Pug videos. Any sort of smush face dog video that they can send me. I'll be in the middle of work at my office and my son will send me a video of dogs doing the most random things. So, you know, those make me smile. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I feel like so, we've been a little bit all over the map, but we, we have a lot of ideas out there. And yeah. we, we have a lot of individual podcasts and articles on many of the things we've talked about mm -hmm. today. We'll link a bunch of those in the show notes. And um, I think we'll try to get some our thoughts together for this and get an article out just listing all of these yeah. different tools as well. But so be on the lookout. For check that. out those articles because they go a little bit deeper than I mm -hmm. think we went today. You know, Amy right. and I try to give you as many tools as we can. But if there's one that resonates with you, check out our articles because we've gone deeper into how to really do some of these things. I know you specialized on one with meditation. You've done one on journaling. Right. I just did the one on the movement. Um, you did one on the sacred space. Mm -hmm. I did one on and, conflict. And you've done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cheryl did one. No. <laughs> but um, definitely go check out our website at invibelife.com and you can see all of these articles. You can tune into these podcasts. We have podcasts before this where we've talked in depth about maybe just one of these topics. So mm -hmm. um, the stuff is there. And if you want more, go ahead and reach out to put it in the notes or put it in your comments of anything you want to know more about that yeah. maybe we didn't talk about today. Yeah. Or you want us to yeah. into more. We'd love yeah. to. Let us know what you do. Cause right. I think that's how this all started we'll, was we'll us help each other. sharing. Yeah. So let us know. Thank but, you for joining us. Yeah. Thanks for joining. Thank you for listening to the In Vibe Life podcast. For more information and to join our community, be sure and check out our website at www.invibelife.com. We look forward to sharing with you.